Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Chile Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Hella Chile. Today's guest is a U.S. Marine veteran, stunt woman, and an actress who is currently playing a stunt double in ABC's The Rookie. And without further ado, I would like to welcome to the show, Miss Leapy Kim. Hi, hi, everyone. Miss Leapy. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, so I've been following you for quite some time on Instagram. I think I added you because I saw that you were in some like kunkamai gear, doing some kickboxing. Mm-hmm. And I've said it before in my past podcast, you know, I, there's nothing I love more than martial arts. I put martial arts above music. But, you know, it was my first love. You know, as a kid, I grew up on Bruce Lee and like kung fu mm-hmm. movies that my parents would, uh, you know, play for me. And um, I did Taekwondo from like age 12 to 15, got my black belt. I was obsessed with it. Oh, so wow. like, awesome. anything involving martial arts is like, yo, I gotta, I gotta interview you. <laughs> right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you for taking your time out your day to be my guest and um, to share your story. I think uh, it'll, be, it'll be inspirational to, to the youth. There's not a lot of, uh, my representation in like Hollywood and like I, mean, I think as a kid I think we all a lot of us like have dreams to like you know be on like kung fu movies or like a I think my dream was to be like a martial arts choreographer so it's like oh, I think wow. it's gonna be really That's cool awesome. to pick your brain about the entertainment industry as well as your life story and just like what it took to get to where you are now and stuff like that okay well hey thank you again for for having me and I would love to share my story um, and how I got into the business. Where where were you like born and um, raised? I was born in South Philadelphia. Um, I was raised there as well. Um, I didn't move out of Philadelphia until after college. So, and then I came out here to LA. So, um, West Coast now. So oh. I think I'll probably be here for a while. <laughs> I didn't know you're from South Philly. I, I got so much love for Philly. Like that's like my second home. It's like down... Oh, really? It's like an hour and a half from where I'm at. I'm in New York, so I go there for, like, the Khmer food. Nice, friends out same, there. Same. Yeah, so. Yeah. What was yeah, it like I, growing up in Philly? I love it. I mean, it's definitely different than out here, West Coast, for sure. Growing up in Philly makes you a little bit tougher, I think. Um, at least, again, my perspective since I'm from there. But, you know, I had a lot of friends, and uh, it was different. You know, it's like I think the the urban life is a lot different from here, um, you know, West Coast. So, mm. yeah, I appreciate it more. What made you move to, like, L.A.? Did you go there for school or...? Okay, so my journey was that I've always wanted to pursue the entertainment business. Like, I knew that I wanted to work in the movies. Um, just like you, I had a dream about being an action star, <laughs> you know, working in the business. And um, so after I finished college, I... Because that's what I was studying. I was studying... Um, you know, broadcasting, telecommunication. Um, I decided I wanted to go to the West Coast just because the platform was a lot bigger out here. The East Coast, it's, I believe, it's almost like there's smaller sectors of broadcasting and filming and stuff like that. But you really have to go to New York to really do that. And I just figure at that time in my life, you know, I've already been in the East Coast for half my life. So it's like, why not try something different. Um, so that's the reason why I wanted to go to LA. Well, you know, Hollywood, should I say? I fell in love with it um, as soon as I got here. Can't beat the weather. You know, a lot of people are very friendly. And, um, you know, so, it, I, you know, like I said, I think I see myself here for a while. To LA's home, right? Yeah, LA's home. West Coast is the best coast. I'm, I myself, I'm from <laughs> uh, the Pacific Northwest, so that's where I was, uh, I was raised and stuff, so... Yeah, I always got love. Are you for from the West. New York? No, I actually moved York? here. I moved here ten. Uh, I keep saying ten years ago, but it's been like twelve years, really. So, um, yeah. yeah, I moved here twelve years ago, and um, my whole family's in the West Coast, like Seattle. So, but, oh, um, okay. okay. Long Beach, LA, like still one of my favorite cities to visit. It's always a good time, good weather, good food, good people. So, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, it's so cool that you're over there living your dream. How's it feel to be Thank living you. your dream? Uh, it's good. I mean, I can't complain about that. Um, you know, I'm still on this journey of learning more about the craft and, you know, the business. Um, as I'm getting older, I'm, I'm learning more things about, you know, what to do, how to put myself out there or also what not to do. I mean, it's definitely a a journey that I'm still um, discovering. So, yeah. Awesome. And, um, 
how's your family like? Are they supportive of your uh, your dreams? And um, how many siblings do you have? Are you like the oldest, youngest? No, not at all. Uh, so um, I'm the youngest. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not the youngest. I'm the second to the youngest. I have uh, four siblings. My I have an oldest sister. Um, she's the oldest. Um, she's almost very like mama like, you know. Um, then I have two older brothers. They're two years apart, and then it's me, and then it's my younger brother, who's who's only one year uh, younger than me. Uh, but we're all very close. Unfortunately, both my parents passed away. Uh-huh. So, yeah. So since then, I I feel like the siblings, like we're, we've actually become a lot closer because of that. But they're all, you know, um, in the East Coast in Philly, um, except for my, my old one, my older brother, who's in Cambodia right now but yeah they're super supportive uh we're always on like a group text and i would tell them if i'm on like a show or so and you know they'll they'll tell me to kick butt you know and represent so it's been great yeah my nieces you know they they watch some of my shows too so they get really excited uh when i'm on on the show as well so so yeah so so everyone's very supportive so yeah Uh, that's that's awesome that you have a family that uh supports you and um roots for you that's i think that's important definitely and, thank um, you and aside from like uh, acting and stuff um what are some of your hobbies what do you like to do outside of work well outside of work i i still love to train um i know it's, it's weird people think that uh who likes to go to a gym to be honest with you i i just like you uh i love martial arts um i love to learn the different types of martial arts you know, anything from, you know, of course, Muay Thai to Kun Khmer and FMA, you know, Filipino martial arts to mm. Jiu-Jitsu, Capoeira. You know, martial arts is art. And, you know, it's, it's neat to kind of really learn about the different styles and where it originated and, you know, why they do those techniques. And uh, I just I just fall in love with it. So so anytime that I do get to like a half time, I basically immerse myself in like the different um, arts and just learn it and just kind of be an overall ninja or something. Mm-hmm. Love it. <laughs> like maybe that's like my goal. I want to be a ninja. <laughs> I love it. So but yeah. So uh, what age were you when you when you developed the love for martial arts? It's crazy. So when I was younger, I've always wanted to do martial arts, but you know, growing up. We were poor, so, you know, we didn't have money to, you know, put me in a, like a karate class or anything like that. So, so unfortunately I actually didn't get into martial arts until, until I got older, actually, until I, I guess until I went to the Marine Corps, because in the Marines, you had to learn uh, martial arts. So I think from there, learning how to fight in the uh, military after that, I, I felt like transitioning out like I still wanted to continue that type of training and that's when I started going more into like kickboxing like more of striking it wasn't until recently I started doing jiu-jitsu um I would say before the pandemic it was like a little over a year so like I'm a blue belt now in jiu-jitsu mm. and then I started doing a uh, FMA as well um a few years before that so, so yeah, I've just always been immersed into martial arts, but I just started at a later time in my life. So that's the reason why I said it's not too late wow. to, to, to learn something new. Um, cause I guess if, if I have to, a calculation, I really didn't do martial arts until like, you know, 20 in my like early twenties. Plus you're still so. young. You're still young. I'm, I'm I'm about to I'm about to be forty. So I'm like, hmm, can I still hey. can I still kick above my waist? Nah, I don't. <laughs> I'm about to do the low kicks. <laughs> kick them in the shin one time. But um, there you go. But hey, I saw your videos. I I I've seen your awesome tornado <laughs> kicks and stuff like that. I can I can't even do that. So oh, so so I, I think that's great. I'm surprised I was still able to do it. That was like uh, I think I was I was I was probably at like my peak weight too i don't i don't know how that happened so but um thank you for your service you said you joined the marines uh, what made you uh, want to join the marines i joined um because i really want to serve when i was in a senior in high school 9 11 happened right so at that time i just remembered i was like you know our our country is going to war you know this is something that i want to be a part of i want to fight you know, and I, I kind of wondered if, if that were my 
influence of wanting to fight came from, just, you know, that urge. After I graduated, or even actually a couple days before I graduated, I, I enlisted in the military. I did eight years and definitely proud of what it made me become. Because, you know, I think a lot of, you know, my personality, the way I, I walk around and stuff like that, I think the, the military did that to me. And, you know, I'm just I'm just glad that I, I joined at, at that age. Wow. Yeah. Salute to you. Um, the military is a uh, it's tough. Uh, I actually tried to join the army when I was eighteen, but I couldn't pass because uh, oh no, I have asthma. <laughs> so I think oh, that disqualified no. me. And um, yeah, but um, you know, I, I do, some, they, do I, you have documentations that you have asthma or? Uh, I think I did bad on that. The 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 the, M, the maps thingy, whatever it was, it military. Oh en- yeah, entering yes. Yeah, so I I'm, I was you know asthma asthma yeah ASVAB. that one yeah so I was like. Mm. It wasn't meant to be, but um, I have friends that did, you know that served in the the military as well, and my nephew's ser- currently in the Marines. So it's like, oh, cool. I'm very uh very proud of the people that could actually go through. It's like a it's a big commitment, it's a life changing, and it's you know you're serving the country. So it's like, wow, That's yeah. a salute to you guys for you know serving. Yeah. I think it's important, and it's like one of the the highest honors. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. What are were some of like challenges like uh, you, you faced like in the military or just life? Well, there's definitely a lot of challenges, um, but I guess more the most frequent challenge that I would say that you know that I face a lot is is you know unfortunately, or I guess I shouldn't say the word unfortunately, but it's the stereotypical you know being a female in a, a very male dominated world, you know, like in the military. Or even actually as a as a stunt woman, it just seems like every job that I, you know, that I go for or every dream, it's 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 just it's a like I said, it's male dominated. So, you know, you kind of have to to prove yourself that you're strong enough and that you can carry that weight, you know, and overcome it. And also just knowing that when you're doing that, you're also inspiring other people that they can do it too. So yeah, I think a lot of those challenges are a are, are part of my life. and But it also makes me be the person that I am today because of that. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I remember growing up, I always just thought to myself, like, I, I just, I don't want to be, I, I never want to go to the easy route. You know, I don't want to, you know, finish high school, maybe go to college or maybe not have a family and then be done with life, you know, like I, I just, I've always wanted to do something different. Like I've always wanted to challenge myself, but not just for myself, but I wanted to show people around me that someone who's small, petite, Asian, come from a refugee family, you know, I can overcome all of that and be big. You know what I mean? So, like, I've always thought to myself, like, I, I wanted to make a footprint, you know, in this world. It wasn't always easy, but at the same time, I think that what, why, when it doesn't, when it's not easy, that's, that's when your greatest accomplishment comes from, you know, like, you're just like, heck yeah, you know, I did that. So, what's your excuse? You know what I mean? Mm. So, 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 yeah, so I would say those are the challenges of my life. Eight years, wow. Did that go by fast or was it like a, a long time, <laughs> the eight years? Uh, the eight years, I, I, well, thinking about it now, I think it went by fast. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I kind of want to say like when you're in it, like you're you're counting days. <laughs> you're like, oh, when, when are you gonna get discharged? <laughs> like like two years and a few couple days, you know, you're, you're, you're counting down times. I mean, like I said, there there's, there's some happy times, but then there's also some rough times. Um, you know, it's never been, I I can't imagine someone saying that they love every minute, you know, of their, their journey or their time in the military. But, but at the same time, like I said, um, those challenges is what made me who I am. Mm. So I don't, so I don't regret it if, um, but I would say, yeah, I, I think the first couple years it went by sort of fast, You know, uh, actually, no, take that back. I think the first few years was when you're kind of like the bottom of the totem pole, when you're the private or private first class, you know, when you're doing 
the dirty work. Um, I think those are the years that kind of goes by super slow. Um, and you can't wait to pick up rank and uh, not get yelled at. <laughs> um, but and then as you get older and pick up rank, you know, your, your job is a little bit more easier, should I say, and you get to delegate your, your jobs and stuff like that. So it's not as bad. So, so I think, and those years, I think it, it kind of flies by a little bit more. So, wow. yeah. And was like the training part, I'm pretty sure it was hard. Like I, I can't swim, so I don't know if I'll even last a day in like boot camp. But um, was there anything that was like super hard for you? Like, uh, or did you, you just knock it out? Like there was nothing that you couldn't do? Like, uh, no, not at all. Oh running. my gosh. So I can't run. No, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can run. So first of all, I can't, I can't swim. I, I didn't know how to swim before going in the Marines. But again, the reason why I wanted to go in the Marines is because I want to learn how to swim. So, and I heard that um, they'll teach you how to swim. So yeah, so that was actually a, a big challenge for me was not knowing how to swim. And I just remember I was like, in my head, I'm like, ah, oh, crap, I'm going to, I'm going to drown. <laughs> but again, in my head, I just thought to myself, I was like, well, hey, you can either drown or somehow really listen to the instructions and listen to what the drill instructor, t you know, tells you what to do and, and just really stay calm and bada bing, bada boom. I learned how to float on my back and mm. that was, the, and that's the way to pass the test. I, I, there's different levels of swimming. And I just remembered like the first one was just, uh, it's like you, you just have to learn how to, your first test is just going from point A to point B from the pool. And it doesn't matter what type of swim, you know, you can do doggy paddle, you can <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and, but I see, I can't even do that. I can't even doggy paddle. And, um, but the easiest way was, um, to swim on your back because you're floating when you're on your back. So I just did the, the backstroke all the way down and I passed wow. and I was like, Oh, okay. So that wasn't that bad. You know, <laughs> um, I would say shooting, you know, before that, I didn't know how to, you know, shoot. I, I didn't use any sort of firearm and it, holding a weapon is pretty intimidating, especially if you have, you know, live rounds. Mm -hmm. um, so that, again, took me a few days to figure it out. Um, and and just like swimming, um, the way I passed was just to, to stay calm, you know, really. It's just to focus and breathing and, and, and staying calm and staying focused. And, and then, you, you know, you'll be able to shoot. You'll be able to swim. Um, running. Yeah. I mean, I, gosh, I think before the Marine Corps, I didn't know how to run two blocks without dying. Really? But again, that's something that they, they train you, you know, they increase the, you know, the mileage like every other day or every week or whatever. And next thing you know, by the end of boot camp, I was, you know, you're, you're able to run like, you know, 10 miles. Everything is challenging, um, especially if you don't prepare yourself to go into the military. But, but at the same time, it's, they're not there to, to see you fail. You know, I think it's something that you have to really dig down deep inside you and realize like, you know, how much does this really mean to you? How much do you really want to graduate? How much do you want to be a Marine? How much do you, you know what I mean? And if you just have that mindset of like not giving up and that's like the biggest thing, it's like, you can't give up or you don't, you shouldn't give up. They never want to hear the word. I can't, or I, I give up. And because once you say the, those words out loud or have that in mind, it's, you already failed yourself. Mm. So so I, I think that that was like a definitely a, a life lesson that I've always gotten from the Marines was just like, you know, as long as you don't give up, you're fine. You know, you could be crawling to the finish line or barely making it, you know, but but you did it. You might break a few limbs here and there, <laughs> <laughs> but but, you know, it's it's not impossible. So, yeah. well, thank you for sharing your um marine experiences and so you um after the marines you uh like how did you uh become a stunt woman in hollywood and, and an actress take me on that journey oh gosh uh it's a long journey so are you ready yes give, give it <laughs> all to me yeah 
as I mentioned to you earlier, I I went to college um, for for like broadcasting and stuff like that. I also minored in theater, and I I had no like dreams of wanting to become an actress or act or performer in any like. It's not that I di- I just didn't I didn't think I was good enough. You know, it's not that I I, I just you know it wasn't like I was like the theater students who are so like hyper and stuff like that. Like I just never, I was just, I just, I just know that I wanted to work in the movie business. I wanted to work in TV and stuff like that, but I wanted to, to do more uh, behind the camera. Like I wanted to be a director. So when I moved out to California, I was trying to find, like I was trying to find jobs that were, that was going to make me, make me be in the business so, and that's how I started off. I, you know, I was a receptionist as, um, at NGM studios, you know, I worked my way up, you know, executive assistant, but then also finding like, you know, hobbies, like, um, you know, I go to church. So like I was doing like camera work at the church, like anything that's like as a production assistant, you know, anything that works in the production, that's what I wanted to do. Right. So how I became a stunt woman was after many, many years of being on the bottom of the totem pole, you know, being a like uh, a PA, a production assistant, I realized like, I don't want to, like, I want to go into a certain department in the business. Like, I don't want to keep being the underdog, you know, when it was time for me to kind of really choose what department in the business I wanted to be in, I decided stunts because at that time I was training martial arts, like I was doing kickboxing and I really fell in love with it. And at that time, too, I was working for the UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Champion. I was a production assistant first, and then I was an associate producer. So I work in the business as fighting, and then I was also doing it on the side. So I was like, heck, you know, uh, one of my coach was like, you know, you should either study, like, you should either go in as a fighter, because at that time, I think they just opened up the Adam Weight division Hmm. for, for women, like, so what, 115. So I was like, heck, I could have, you know, I could totally like go compete and learning to fight. But at that time, I was, I guess you're, you're going to find out how old I am. But, but basically, I was close to my 30s. And I just thought to myself, I was like, you know, as much as I love learning how to fight, learning the skill, I don't think I really want to go into the UFC fighting some like 20 year old. You know, right. and I, and it's not even that. I just feel like I don't want a short, a short career. I don't want to start off a career and then be retiring in five years from then. You know what I mean? So my coach was the one who was kind of like, well, look, you, you apparently know what you're doing in, you know, fighting and you work in the business, like you work in entertainment. So why won't you become a stunt woman? And I kid you not, that's when like the light bulb, you know, came to life. And I was like, holy shit, you're right totally forgot about like stunt people, you know, because at that time when I was younger, when you think of stunt, uh, stunt people, you kind of think of Jackie Chan. Yeah. Like Jackie Chan, you think of, or like drivers, Mm. you know, like, or or people like with big explosions and stuff like that. So in my head, I didn't think that like you can do like, um, fight Fight choreography or fight scenes or, or, or even something as simple as like basic stunts, like falling or, or, you know, getting hit or something like that. So Mm. I was like, Oh yeah, I guess I never considered that. And so from that point on, I basically was like, okay, I will set up and decide to become a stunt woman. Like, so how now, how am I going to go there? Like, how am I going to get myself there? So the blessing was since I work in the business, I was able to kind of like when I'm on set, I like kind of talk to the stunt people. Like I asked like, Hey, you know, I really want to get into stunts. Like how, how, how do I get in? Like, what do you have to do? And pretty much, you know, did a lot of research and in order for you to do stunts, you know, you have to have your like SAG card, you know, your SAG after card. And so basically that falls in line with acting, right? Stunt people are performers. So so you have to get that union card. And then now to get that card was also hard because if you want to be, if you want to get that card, there's multiple ways. Like you have to do background extras, but even that you have to get like a certain like amount of vouchers to get like 
the one card. And then, so that was really hard, but I, again, was, was glad that I was able to have some friends who were writing a movie, writing a show actually. And, uh, you know, she was like, you know, if you want to be a part of this, you know, help us produce it. And I was like, yeah. So, so basically I got my side card that way. So yeah. And then from there, I, I just started training with other stunt folks. Like I would say I started just like uh, you finding me in Instagram um, back then, you know, not that was long ago, but I'm just saying like, I, I just found people on Facebook who, who did, you know, stunt like training, training at the park or stunt training at a gym, mm. you know, like they have workshops and then I'll just like, all right, well, I'll just go to there and, you know, pay like a fee and, and just learn and also learning to like network with those folks and little by little, that's how you start making a name for yourself. You know, you start, you know, people start no- noticing you like, oh, you know, Leafy has a very unique look. You know, um, she looks like she's an MMA fighter just because of her skill set. You know, she does kickboxing. Um, her arms are, you know, muscular. So, you know, so if there's a show that needs a five foot one you know, Asian or somewhat look Hispanic girl, they're like, oh, weepy. You know what I mean? So, Mm. and like slowly but surely, that's how, you know, I I went into the stunt, the stunt business. So, and then as for acting, that one kind of fell into place because like, as I was training, doing stunts and stuff like that, like there was a few like student projects like there was a lot of uh, projects that were kind of like, um, hey, you know, we really like your look. We like your skill set. We're writing this this uh, short film. Uh, would you like to be a part of it? You know, and that time, you know, I was like, yeah, sure. You know, you want to get experience. So I was like, sure, I'll, I'll do that. And then, um, you know, one small role to another small role. Next thing you know, I, you know, I got like, um, I got into a bigger role, like the main role of this short film of about um, called Let It Go. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's yet. about, uh, oh, you have it? Okay, it's, it's on it YouTube. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's a short film, but it's basically, it talks about um, a Marine that's coming home and is dealing with uh, survivor's guilt. So, and, you know, basically what that is, is basically um, coming home knowing that, you you're know, alive. your friends or family that, yeah, that you're, you're alive. alive. Some of your coworkers died. Yeah. Is that what it is? I know. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yep. So, and so I did that. I did that short. And again, it was a student film and that film, she, the director, she decided to submit it to a film festival. And next thing you know, we got nominated and next thing you know, I won um, uh, Best Actress wow. at the GI Film Festival. And that was my first ever, like, big role. And then to win Best Actress when I didn't think I was like, what? Are you serious? <laughs> and, Congrats. you know, and it was a big festival. It wasn't like a small, honky-dory, uh, like, school, you know, club thing, it, you know, um, I was like, holy crap, that's awesome. And, and so that, from that project, it rolled down from there because now a lot of people saw what I can do from that project. I went from another project um, that's also on YouTube Swarm, again, playing a, like a kickboxer. So just overall, just, you know, lots of blessings because like the more you put yourself out there and just like doing stuff, you never know like what journey things are going to happen. And, and to be honest with you, I'm still discovering things now, like, you know, like, you know, being a part of this and that, um, being on your podcast. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, you just have to put yourself out there. So right. you never know what's your next, your next big project coming up. Uh, right. So you're glad you asked uh, the stunt people questions, you know, because if you didn't, yeah. you probably wouldn't be in the position or get the opportunity. Like, like I told you off camera, like uh, I wanted to like hit you up to be on the podcast a, a while ago, but um, I kind of like hesitated because I'm like, what if she says no? But then they're like, you know, I just got to shoot my What's shot, it? and I we're here, and um, 
You know, you guys got to shoot your shot. You don't know if you guys don't try. That's what I want to. That's a message I want to give to the to the people out there that are listening. You know, I think that that is life. You know, you don't know. Yeah. Cold mouth don't get fed. You know. No, for sure. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. You know, just yep. keep it. You know. Yep. One hundred percent. Yeah, and I was gonna say, and believe me, I've gotten many rejections or as far as like in the business and stuff like that. Like you know, someone say, "Oh, I'm too short. Oh, she doesn't look Asian." enough you know uh you know or she's uh too muscular or whatever or you know but with all those rejections you'll be surprised you'll you'll get a a a good thumbs up and then when you do that's that's your break you know it's if you don't put yourself out there you'll, you'll never know and it's you can do it and fail or you can do it and you don't want to ever think of the what if you know what i mean Mm-hmm. Just do it. What's the worst that can happen? You know? Exactly. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm so proud of you for, like, representing not only for Asian people in in, uh, in the media, but also our Khmer people. There's not there's not a lot of us. You know, I feel like we're the underdogs. So it makes me super proud to see you do your thing and just living some of our dreams, you know? Just oh, thank think, you. being on TV or just uh, playing a role that you like, you know? Kickboxing, you know? It's not like... And you're five one, so it's like, wow, you're you're going against the grain, you know. Like you don't have to be tall to to, to be on no. TV, and you know that gives us hope. That means like, yo, if if you could do it, why not? Eat, why not me? Or why not little Kosal? Or you know, the the, the youth yeah. that may have these these dreams of uh being a martial arts stunt choreographer or something, or you know, or being no, an actor sure. or an actress. Mm-hmm. So I think it's uh, yeah. really inspiring your story, and um, yeah, and um. I appreciate everything. Appreciate you, and um, I know that um, you have uh, bigger and bigger things coming too. And um, would you like to share like um, this the show, the rookie? Like, what was that about? The on ABC. Uh, well, I I played on two episodes. the uh, The first episode uh, that I was on, um, I forgot what episode that was. I want to say it's episode nine. Um, basically, I play a bank teller. That was actually my first co-star role. Oh, so, okay. yeah, so it was an acting role. And that one, I um, basically, I was a hostage at a bank. And uh, so you'll probably see an ugly cry <laughs> in that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, can, I'm not a pretty cry. Yeah, if that? you can figure out the, the episode and the season, I'll, I'll, I'll try to find it. on. Is it on Netflix? Like, ABC show should be on Hulu or Netflix? Hulu, Hulu. I have It's Hulu. on Hulu. Yeah, it's on cool. Hulu. Yes, I believe it's episode nine. Um, mm-hmm. So I was I played the bank teller, and then I was also on the most recent episode, which is episode thirteen, and and that one was a stunt double, and that one was pretty cool. Um, I double for um, the actress Melissa O'Neill, who plays um, one of the rookie cops, um, and she. So and the stunt is that um, I get tackled by some bad guys and uh to the ground and then i got picked up and beef you know and thrown into like the van so wow. so and that was my stunt so and you yeah. actually learn how to fall correctly too it's an art you know learning how to fall oh, break yeah. fall that's a yeah that's real that's so wow so no for sure and then depending on how many times you have to do it you know you, you can't tell the director oh wait i'm sorry i, <laughs> I can't do anymore you know what i mean like you, you might just have you, to get bruises gonna... for it it's something you know that's what you signed up for so i think that's really cool though that to be for able sure. to, to be a part of like the rookie and uh i definitely want to look for you on there like i'm gonna try to find you on you said of the, the first season and uh episode nine and uh episode 13 13 yes okay, so, yes 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 so for the viewers and listeners um that that are interested in watching it's called the rookie it's on abc um look for episode 9 and 13 or if you want to watch the whole couple season you can too just to get caught up and see what it's about i believe it's about rookie cops right yeah lapd mm-hmm. LAPD. It's about the lapd yeah yeah it's actually pretty cool i i didn't watch it before getting cast um but the show is actually pretty like pretty funny um but as at the same time it has some some dark side so it's it's really it's really good so um but i am on another show coming up but unfortunately i can't spoil that you can't speak on this show yet okay, yeah so, not yet so, okay that's good that you have tuned. projects coming up because i was going to ask you uh what else you got going on but um so the rookie is what you're doing currently and um mm-hmm. 
what are some of like your most uh like uh your favorite moments on on screen and stuff like what what are there uh projects that you like doing that we should know about um that's coming up or, um, or any wow. previous uh you, you mentioned those short films i definitely uh want to go check those out it's called the storm oh no no um what so the first one is called let it go let it go let it go like the song let it go let it go <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's let it go um um i think you can find it if you youtube uh let it go um leapy or something like that okay. you'll see it um and that's again that's about the marine corps vet um dealing with survivor's guilt and then there's um swarm like s-w-a-r-m that's and and swarm. again it's on youtube as well it's a swarm short film and that one is about um, kickboxer who end up fighting zombies. Oh, Let's wow. just say it that way. <laughs> yeah. And actually, that was really fun. I, you know, it's my first zombie type show. And believe it or not, I was, <laughs> even though I was acting, but I was really scared. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like the thought of being in like, um, like an, a horror film. You know, I'm just like, holy crap, like, you know, seeing people like the, the movements of a zombie or being chased by one. I think I kid you not. I think one of the screens that were on on the on the film, it was like a real like, real you know, screen. curling scream. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, shit. I was wow. <laughs> so that was not that was not acting. That was me freaking out because you're <laughs> right behind me. <laughs> That's awesome. But. But yeah, so I would I would say I would you know I'm very proud of that. From what I've been told is uh, again uh, this is there's a there's a project that I'm working on hopefully soon, and you know I really would like to talk about it, but but I, I'll have to we'll probably have to do it like a second podcast. Or oh, something. definitely, you're welcome so, anytime. So, yeah, and I would yeah. love to have you back uh, to get updates. But um, thank you so much for sharing your um, experiences when oh, your some of your uh, favorite things about about acting and uh, being a stunt woman. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for having me. Also, I have a couple more questions, if you don't mind. Um, of course. How important is Asian representation in uh, mainstream media? I think Asian representation on screen is extremely important because, you know, growing up, you know, at least during my time, I, I didn't really see many of it. And so you, you almost think that a part of you feels as though like, well, there's no way I can be on that screen because there's no one there that's like you. So, you know, you feel as though that that dream is almost impossible. So, so of course, Asian representation is very important because I'm hoping that that will open doors to the newer generation, you know, the generation that can say, oh, wow, you know, if she can do it, if he can do it, then it shouldn't be that hard. And I think we have to have that sort of that medium, you know, that 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 platform that says that, yeah, it's not impossible. And the reason why there's not a lot of people on the screen is because there needs to be more. And again, that's the reason why, you know, I'm on the show with you just to tell you that, you know, to tell you and our viewers that, you know, it's hey, it's a hard industry, but remember, it's not impossible. It's not that, you know, you have to win a lottery, you know, to, to, to get into the business. If you're really serious about it and you want to be an actress, you want to be a stunt person, you know, you really have to, you know, do your research, network, you know, talk to people, um, hone your craft, like sharpen those skills, whatever it is, if it's, if it's martial arts or if it's gymnastics or dancing or being a TV host, you know, those, those are, um, oh, and also I think my biggest advice would be like, honestly, putting yourself out there, you know, now there's these platforms like YouTube, um, you know, you doing podcasts and stuff like that. There's all these, you know, platforms for people to just put themselves out there, um, to talk about themselves or what their journey and stuff like that. So if you do that, there's no doubt, like you will be successful you know, um, and even if, you know, it might seem hard or crazy, you know, people might look at you weird, but heck, who cares? Just do it. You know, it's your dream. You know, don't let anyone stop you. That's for sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, of course. I learned a lot about you and, um, 
drop some gems for us. Yeah. Uh-huh, um, thank you. Any uh, last words or uh, shout outs you want to give? Uh, wow, shout outs. Uh, definitely to my family and friends out there. Um, uh, and you guys who's always following me. Um, thank you so much for, you know, for following me and um, being inspired. Um, I'm hoping that I can, you know, represent you guys more in a, a more bigger platform in the future. Um, but honestly, I wouldn't be able to do it without, without all you guys support. It really, it really means a lot to me. It really does. Uh, thank you. Thank you for thank the you. love. Appreciate yeah. you. And um, on behalf of the Khmer people around the world, uh, you make us proud and uh, we're rooting for you and um, keep shining. We'll see you at the top. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Cool. Bye.